Hello, and welcome to another screencast on Taylor series. This one picks up where the last one left off, so if you have not watched screencast 8.5.4, this one's not going to make a lot of sense to you. So go ahead and stop this one, go back and watch the next one, and trust me, these need to be watched in order. Okay, so where we left off the last time then is we decided that the Taylor series for the natural log of x is going to follow a certain pattern. Okay, so when k is 1, that's called an order 1 Taylor series, we end up getting the, actually the line, as it turns out, of x minus 1. Okay, now our Taylor series is centered at 1. So you notice right around 1, our approximation is actually really good, right? My red line comes really, really close to my my function ln of x. Um, it's only until we get about, I don't know, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.6 away do these two pieces start to separate. Okay, let's take a look when k is 2. So when k is 2, I've got this Taylor series, again following the pattern you saw in the last video, centered at 1. Okay, so looking here, I'm still pretty close when I go 0.4 away. When I'm 0.6 away, I see some separation on this side. But on the right side, I don't see any separation really until we're about 0.8 away. Hmm. Okay, let's look at the next k. So when k is 3, I end up with this polynomial. So you notice it's getting bigger, but it's following the same pattern that you saw in the last video. Um, again, we're centered at 1, so looking to the left, I'm pretty close until oh, about 0.2, and to the right, I'm really close until oh, maybe somewhere between 1.8 and 2, okay? So again, we're getting good approximations here to our function with this particular polynomial. Okay, order 4, so this one I think is looking the best one yet. Here we go, centered at 1, so if I go out to the right oh, until again maybe about 2, somewhere between 2 and 2.2, it starts to, you know, it's called diverging, they start to go away from each other. And then over here on the right, I'm really, really close at 0.2, and then things start to fall off here when I get close to 0, which makes total sense because the natural log function has an asymptote toad at zero, okay, so things are definitely going to be shooting down towards um, negative infinity right there, where a polynomial, that's not going to happen, okay? So all of this leads us then to the natural question, well, how good is our approximation? How far can we go away from this particular value we're centered at and still have a good approximation, still have convergence, okay? So that leads us to our question. Given the Taylor series for the function we've been working with, natural log of x, centered at x equals 1, okay, is defined by, so this is what you guys, what we figured out in the last video. We showed you how to get that. So our series is k goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k, times x minus 1 to the k. Huh, there are lots of k's in there. All right, so anyway, so that is our Taylor series. Now, I want you to use the ratio test to find the radius and the interval of convergence. Okay, so the radius is going to tell us how far away we can go from that center point of x equals 1 and still have our approximation be good. Okay, then the interval, what we're going to do then is we're going to test our endpoints and we're going to see does it converge at our endpoints or not. Okay, so let's start with our ratio test. So hopefully you remember that the ratio test says the limit as k goes to infinity. Um, then here we want to use our function, oops, I'll just write this out, the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 divided by the absolute value of a sub k. Okay, so our function here is our a sub k. <coughs> So then how do we get a sub k plus 1? Well, that just means wherever we see a k, we're going to replace it with k plus 1. And we're going to throw all this in absolute values, and we're going to make a big old mess with this stuff, let me tell you. Okay, so we've got negative 1 to the k plus 1 plus 1, okay, k plus 2, divided by k plus 1 times x minus 1 to the k plus 1. Okay, 
that's going to be divided by a sub k, so it's just this whole thing rewritten inside of those absolute values. Okay, now our job is to simplify this, so let's throw some algebra at it first before we even bother with this limit. But I'm going to rewrite it every time, of course, so I don't lose it. Okay, so looking at these absolute values, well, what happens to negative 1 to the k plus 2 in absolute value? Well, that's just going to give us 1, right? Because negative 1 to the k plus 2 is going to oscillate between negative 1 and 1, but that's pretty much just going to drop out. Okay, bam, that goes away. Now, what about the k plus 1? What happens to that in absolute value? Well, remember, k starts at 1 and goes to infinity, so the absolute value isn't going to affect it at all. Okay, same thing with this exponent up here. The absolute value is not going to affect that. So this whole numerator then simplifies into the absolute value of x minus 1, because that obviously will get affected, right? x can be anything, so x could be, you know, negative 2 or something. So then that absolute value is going to make a difference. So that's going to be to the k plus 1 all over k plus 1. Similar argument with our denominator, so this piece wipes out. The absolute value slides inside of that, oopsie, exponent. And we've got that. Okay, we're getting there. So now I see a fraction over a fraction, so let's go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. Let me actually go down to the next line here so I'm not squeezing stuff in too much. So I've got the absolute value of x minus 1 to the k plus 1 all over k plus 1 times, I'm going to go ahead and flip that denominator over, so I've got k time, or k over x minus 1 to the k. Alright, hopefully you guys are buying this algebra so far. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of, let's break these two things apart. So let's get the k's over here together and all the x minus 1 and absolute values together. So we have the limit, k approaches infinity, k over k plus 1, absolute value x minus 1 to the k plus 1, all over absolute value of x minus 1 to the k. All right. Now, where do we start with this? Well, I'm going to take a look at the second piece here. So looking at this piece, hopefully you guys can see we actually have the same base, as ugly as it is, right? So then when we divide, remember we can subtract our exponents. Oh, lovely. Look at what's going to happen then. So we're going to have k plus 1 and then minus k, so that's just going to give us the absolute value of x minus 1. Woohoo! All right, that's nice. Okay, what about this other piece here? So let me highlight that one in a different color. So what happens to k over k plus 1 as k goes to infinity? Hmm, well, it's infinity over infinity, so that means we can use L'Hopital's, right, which we're going to end up with doing our derivatives 1 over 1, so that's just going to give us 1. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, now, thinking back to our ratio test, we know that whatever we have left here converges when this stuff is going to be less than 1. Okay, now this 1 times all this stuff doesn't really matter, so this is really the part that we are focused in on. Okay, so this tells us then that our radius of convergence is 1. Okay, let me draw out a number line. So I'm centered at 1. I'm going to go 1 to the right, and I'm going to go 1 to the left. And pretend like those are actually the same length. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so if I go 1 to the left, that's going to put me at 0. If I go 1 to the right, that's going to put me at 2. Okay, so this is my possible interval of convergence going from 0 to 2. So now I need to test these endpoints. All right, so when x equals 0, let's see what we get. So remember our series was negative 1 to the k plus 1 all over k. And now I'm going to plug in my values for x here. Okay, so that gives me the sum, k goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the k plus 1 all over k, times, then that's going to end up giving me 0 minus 1 to the k. 
Alrighty, so that gives us, doing a little bit of simplification here, this is really negative 1 to the k, right? So then we can combine these negative 1 bases, so we're going to end up with k goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the 2k plus 1, all over k. All right, so does this thing converge or diverge? I'm not totally convinced yet. So let me use another property of exponents and break up this numerator. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 to the 2k times negative 1 to the 1 all over k. All right, well, negative 1 to the 2k, that means it's going to be negative 1 to an even power. So this piece is actually just going to give us 1. So we really then have the series, k goes from 1 to infinity, of negative 1 over k. Well, this is the opposite of the harmonic series, and you guys know harmonic series diverges. Okay, so that means we are not going to include 0. So when I go to write my interval, um, which I'll do down here at the bottom, we're not going to include 0. And again, that makes perfect sense because it has an asymptote there, the natural log does. And remember, that's where the heck, where this whole Taylor series stuff came from. Okay, let's look at 2, and let's see what happens at 2. k goes from 1 to infinity. So these problems really have a lot to them. You know, there's a lot of stuff involved. <clears throat> but it's all bringing pieces together that we've done before, so that's always good. Okay, well, 2 minus 1 is just 1 to the k. 1 to the k is anything, or is just 1. 1 to the anything, I should say, is 1. <laughs> all right, so that's just going to give us negative 1 to the k plus 1 all over k. This series alternates, right? So by the alternating series test, this one converges. So we will include 0, or include 2. I forgot what number I was doing. <laughs> All right, so my interval of convergence then is going to look like the open parenthesis, so 0 to 2, and then with a closed bracket. So this tells me then that my series is going to be very close to my approx or my original function. Let me go back and look at this. So here, this again, this makes perfect sense. At 0, we have this total separation, but over here at 2, we're pretty darn close. All right, thank you for watching.